this is my Audi TTS and well it looks okay. Out of the box, the standard TT is a pretty good looking car, but there's not much, especially on the front, which distinguishes this one against the standard one. Now, on the back of the TTS, you have got a quad exit exhaust, which does make it a little bit more spicy. But there is so many body kits on the market today for every sort of car, I think it would be rude to not try and upgrade my Audi TTS. So, in order to sort out the TT's slightly drab looks, I've been and bought this. Now, I have only got the rear bumper at this point, and I am after the front bumper too. And I know there's another YouTuber who's got one who's taken the engine out of a TTRS and put it in a caddy called TR Hamza. And yeah, basically, Hamza, if you're watching this, message me, let's sort out a price. So, for those of you that don't know, this is a Audi TTRS bumper. This is a genuine bumper that is pretty much complete. I have got the trim and the other exhaust tip to go on, but it also does need a repair just here. Now, I am going to be wrapping the car in the future, so I'm not bothered about these parts being absolutely polished to perfection. I'm okay with them looking a little bit tatty, but the one thing that I can't have is damage like this. Now, bodywork isn't a speciality of mine, so I'm just winging it and see how I get on, but fingers crossed that should be a good little bit of damage to start to learn on and improve my skills for the future. But for now, let's get to sorting out this damage. The first thing that I need to do is prepare the area for a bit of filler, so sanded it back just to make sure that surface is scuffed and then the filler can stick to it properly is the first stage. So I've never really used filler before on my own, but I think it should be relatively simple, especially on a repair that's that small. And it comes with pretty easy instructions. It's a two-part thing, so I think this is the hardener and this is just the filler. You use a golf ball of this for a P of that. I don't know how you're supposed to measure that, but I think we're just going to wing it. So I grab a scoop of the filler and a pea of the hardener and mix them both together on a piece of cardboard. I got them as close as what I think, you know, you're supposed to. It's really, really hard to judge, especially when you don't know exactly what you're aiming for. So I gave it a good mix together and then went over to the bumper and masked off any areas that I didn't want to get any filler on. So all of the plastics and everything like that. And then I just went with the body lines of the bumper and smeared it on and hoped for the best, really. I think I did okay, though. I think I did okay. Well, that's the filler on. I don't know if I've done it well or done it badly. I'm, I'm just clueless. But while I'm waiting for that to dry before I can sand it, I'm going to try and clean up these exhaust tips because these are like a key part of the bumper and the look of the TTRS. So we may as well try and make them like brand new while they're off the car. Now, these exhaust tips are pretty much inaccessible when they're on the car. So I thought now would be the ideal time to give them a proper clean up. And then when they're on the car, they're definitely going to look good. So what I use is some very fine wire wool to clean up the bare metal parts and then use a very small machine polisher to polish up the painted black bits. And although they didn't come up 100% perfect, they are definitely a massive improvement. As you can see there, the difference between the before and the after is night and day. So now I'm happy with the finish on that tip, I can actually fit it onto the bumper. They just connect to the back of the bumper with four screws and I did find that I'd actually done it wrong here. So don't worry, I did correct it before it went on the car. But anyway, now the filler is dry, I can then sand it back and try and get it as smooth as possible. I didn't actually have a sanding block to do this. I used like a foam sanding pad with some 120 grit over the top of it to try and make sure there's gonna be no finger lines in there. I'm sure someone will correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the key to doing work like this is the fit of it you want to make sure that you can't feel any damage at all because obviously you won't be able to see the difference because it's all gonna be different colors but yeah you want the whole thing to feel smooth and there to be no blemishes in there at all okay I've got that I think pretty smooth now I don't think that feels too bad you can still just feel the filler slightly but I think I'm gonna be able to fix that by using some high build primer sanding it priming it sanding it and then just painting it with whatever I want to finish it with but I think I've done all right there I don't think that's too bad so like I just said, the next stage I wanted to do was high build primer to try and fill in any imperfections in the filler. And then once that was done, I could sand it again. And then once that was sanded, I could then prime it ready for my coat of black. Okay, so the bumper now is about as good as I think I'm gonna be able to get it. So it's all primed up. Now I just need to spray it black and get it close-ish to the rest of the bumper and then it's kind of ready for wrapping in the future. So I'm gonna spray it in the absolutely incorrect Audi Phantom Black and that should do the job. 
So I decided my approach for this would be to just do the whole corner of the bumper. There's a nice line to mask off for the top of it and then just try and fade it out somewhere more further up in the bumper itself. So I sanded all of that section and then was able to spray this black paint over it and build it up slowly in layers. And then I was actually surprised by how good a finish I got in the end. Hopefully you will be too. But once I built up enough layers, I could remove the masking and then my bodge of a repair that actually turned out all right was done. Well, do you know what? Considering I wasn't particularly trying, it's not come out too badly, really. Obviously, I know the color doesn't match because, well, it's not even the same paint code, but I'm absolutely fine with that. It served exactly the purpose I wanted it to serve. And if anything, it's turned out better because, well, look at it. <laughs> I can see myself in it, so that's a start, but yeah. I've actually seen smart repairs done on cars that are worse than this, so yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that for like a, a quick whip over with a spray can. Now the rest of the bumper was really faded, it had obviously been stored outside and been under a tree and was covered in bird poo marks, so I thought I'd give the rest of the bumper a good polish up to try and make it a, just a little bit more glossy, more similar to that corner which we'd just repaired. Okay, so the bumper's now cleaned up and ready to go on the car, but I need to get the old bumper off the car in order to put this one on. But before I do that, I think I wanna tackle another quick job, which is gonna be these brake calipers. So with the help from my mate Joe, I get the car in the air and start to tackle what I wanna do with these brakes. I like to try and do something a little bit different, a little bit contrasting, and something to make the car, you know, a little bit more eye-catching. At the moment the calipers are black with like this plastic coating on them and that coating is starting to chip away so it's now a perfect excuse to change the colour and do something a bit more in your face. So the first thing that we do is give the calipers a good thorough clean because if you don't do this you'll end up painting over loads of dirt and the end result is just going to look rubbish so you've got to make sure that you do this stage properly. Once they're clean I can then mask off the rest of the calipers and also use that opportunity to paint the hubs too. This is the area where the wheel bolts to, loads of times you see it where the centre of the brake disc is rusty and just a quick etch primer and satin black can really tidy the look of that up. But once they're done and the calipers are masked up, I can then prime those ready to receive their layer of paint. Before that, we wanna make sure we're not gonna cover the car in overspray from the gun. So using a masking sheet to cover off the rest of the car just deals with that. And now we are more or less ready for some color on those brakes. Okay, so there is the car masked off and now we can have a look at what color I'm gonna be doing the calipers on the TTS. Yeah, that's right, we're going for white, which I know might seem like a bit of a strange choice, especially for such a dirty part of the car. But I wanted something bright and something that wasn't going to clash necessarily with the colour that I'm doing the rest of the car. So have faith, I promise you it will look good when everything's done. So with the base coat, you've got to mix this with thinners to make sure it will go through the gun properly and you will be able to spray it. So you mix it 50% colour to 50% thinners in order to do that. Well, let's do this. So now all the preparation work is done, we can paint the calipers with this coat of white. It took about two or three coats to get them completely covered and then did a couple of coats of clear too, just to make sure they're gonna be long lasting and have a durable finish. Now obviously this is not the perfect way to paint brakes. You wanna be ideally taking them off, taking them to be fully stripped down, being sandblasted and powder coated. This is gonna be the most durable way, but I think this is kind of like a second best option. Right, so the calipers are now looking so much fresher and I am 100% vibing the white. I've cleaned up this little caliper cover thing which says TTS on it, but I think I'm gonna try and get a new sticker for that. So when I do put that on, it looks fresh. But now that they're done, I'm waiting for the paint to dry before I can put that on, then I can actually start to tackle the rear bumper and see how this new TTRS one actually looks on the car. The first thing that we've got to do to take the rear bumper off is take the rear lights out. This is quite simple, there's a little flap in the boot and then like a little plastic nut that you can twist out and then the light slides out sideways and then you can just unplug that from the car. Now with those out there's a selection of clips underneath the lights and then some Torx bits in the wheel arches and underneath and at the top as well. And once all those are off the bumper comes away and then we can disconnect all of the electrics for I believe it's a fog light and also all the parking sensors too. 
So now that's off the car, we can start transferring all the bits of that bumper that we need onto the new one, including the parking sensors and also that little fog light thing. Okay, as always when fitting another bumper, whether it's genuine or not, not everything is the same on the RS as it is on the S. So there's a little a couple of bits that I've had to do. The first thing obviously is the exhaust tips. These ones bolt into the bumpers and on the S, they are actually connected to the exhaust. So to get by this problem for now, I'm gonna chop the exhaust just here and then just see how that looks and see if we can get away with doing that or if we've got to do more at a later stage. One little repair I have had to do as well, I know this looks sketchy, but I've had to glue this section down and then I've just used gaffer tape over the top of it just to make sure it stays in place and stays nice and solid, but it'll probably end up living like that because you will never see it. But first, we're gonna test fit it and just see how it fits with these exhaust tips. Safety. So with an angle grinder and some eye protection on, I start chopping away at the exhaust. I did find actually the better way of doing this was undoing the exhaust hanger from the car, letting the exhaust drop slightly, and that gave you much more access to be able to chop away at the exhaust pipes, and you're not cutting away at everything else. Okay, so the exhaust is now modified, ready for the new bumper, and okay, it's not the cleanest job, but if I do need to, I can get the rear back box chopped here, and then get some pipe brought round to the tips in the RS rear bumper. After that elegant modification, I can now fit up that TTRS rear bumper, but the first thing obviously is plugging in all of the wiring, so for the parking sensors, and then we can start fitting up the bumper, and it did fit as you'd expect really, there was nothing that was particularly in the way, apart from the heat shield for the bat box, we did have to squash that in towards the bat box a little bit more, but that was it really. And straight away you can see how much better this bumper looks with those massive fat exhaust tips, and also it hangs lower on the sides as well, it just looks a lot more evil, but that's on the car now, so we can put the rear lights back in and the rear bumper installs done. So we're now one third of the way to converting this car to a TTRS replica look-alike. I do need a front bumper obviously as I've already mentioned and I also need a spoiler but I'm not sure which route to take with this. Do I buy a genuine one and fit that or do I buy a replica one? I'm not sure on the quality differences so it would be nice at least to get your guys opinions and also maybe even see a real one versus a fake one in the flesh to make my decision. But I'm sure that'll be an easy decision in the grand scheme of things. But anyway, now the bumper is fully on, we can then refit those kind of caliper covers and this was a job that I hated doing. Obviously, it's only a few hours after the calipers have been painted, so the paint itself is still quite soft and these, it just seems impossible to be able to fit them without damaging the paint on the calipers. The best way that we found to avoid this was to put a bit of masking tape where this was gonna catch on the caliper itself and then just use a bit of brute force to squeeze them into place. There's no ideal way of doing this, unfortunately. Now, I didn't manage to get new stickers for those in time, but I can come back to that at a later date. It's not a problem, but now those are on. We can then refit the wheels and really take a look at how the conversion so far is looking. Now I know there's going to be some of you that don't like the fact that I'm putting a TTRS kit on a TTS because it's like putting M badges on a 320D but I'm doing it just because it looks so much better and looks so much meaner. I just think it's much better looking body kit. And if you guys want me to, I will retain the TTS badge to make sure that I'm not catfishing anyone. But I love the look of this rear bumper and also now it passes the fist test and it just sits so much lower on the back as well, which makes it look a lot more meaty. And also, what do you guys think of the white calipers? I really like them, but at the moment they may not tie in 100% with the look of the car, but what I've got planned for it, it definitely will. So what I really need now is a TTRS 
front bumper, they do do replica ones, which I'd be more than happy to fit because they're about half the price. But I would also be more than happy to fit a genuine one too, preferably one that's already painted in black. So if you've got one, make sure you let me know on my Instagram, which is just here. And although it's Christmas day right now, I won't be seeing you guys after this video until the new year. So for now, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, and I'll see you next year.